Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about 3.2 exponential and logistic modeling. As we look at this, we're going to take the basic part of 3.2, the part where we explore the initial equation for population growth that we're going to look at, apply it to a couple of basic problems, and then use that to do some more application problems next class period. The thing that we're looking at first is the actual equation for population exponential growth. So the exponential population model. It has to do with the constant percentage rate R, meaning that's the rate at which the population is changing either growth or decay. P of T is equal to P sub zero one plus R raised to the T. Now obviously when we end up with formulas that have tons of um, letters and numbers in them like this, tons of variables, we need to know what they actually equal. So P sub zero is our initial population. What are we talking about? We're talking about population growth or population decay or exponential growth or exponential decay. So our P sub zero is what did we start out with? From there we grew or from there we decayed. And so our P sub zero is our initial population, what we started out with. T is our time in years. Okay, and that's important to know years because it's going to affect the way that we calculate T later in this section. R is the rate. A couple of note, notes. The rate is as a decimal for the formula. So they might give it to us as an 8% growth rate. Well, we'd have to convert that to 0 0.08, which is the decimal. And... When we're looking at this, this is actually what's going to tell us if it's growth or decay. So if R is greater than zero, that means growth. And one plus R is the growth factor. If R is less than zero, so I forgot the zero up there. If R is less than zero, that means decay. Okay, so think about it like this. If I'm doing one plus R and R is less than zero, let's say it's negative 0.9, that would mean I'd be raising 0.1 to the T power. Well, when I'm multiplying a decimal together over and over and over, it's going to be smaller and smaller and smaller. And so one plus R is the decay factor. Okay, so those are uh, the things that I need to know up front. So that's the basics. Let's look at a couple of models of this or a couple of problems that have to do with this. It's asking us to tell whether the population model is an exponential growth function or decay function and find the constant percentage rate of growth or decay. So a couple of things here. Is it growing or shrinking? And what's the rate? So the population of San Jose is equal to 898,759 times 1.0064 to the T. The, the equation that I'm looking at is P sub T is equal to initial population times 1 plus R to the T. So whatever I'm multiplying by, this is my initial population. Okay, so that's, that, that could be useful for a couple of different things. If I ask you a different question about San Jose, after three years, how much has it grown? I could plug in a T, and I need to know that initial population. In this problem, I'm looking at its function as it's sitting in the equation. So this is my P sub zero. This is my one plus R to the T power. Well, it wants to know, is it growing or shrinking? Well, in order to tell that, I need to find out is r sub zero or r is r greater than zero or is r less than zero? Well, what is r here, right? And so if I and want, want to find r, um, 1.0064 is equal to one plus r. And so to figure out what r is, I got to subtract one. Well, if 0.0064 is equal to r. 
What does that mean? That means r is greater than zero. So this means r is greater than zero, which equals growth. Okay, that's the first part. Second part is, what is the percentage rate of growth or decay? So percentage means take that rate and convert it to a percent. So r to a percent equals 0 0.0064 times 100, which is equal to 0.64 or 0.64% growth. Okay, for Detroit, let's look at it. Again, P sub zero is here. This is one plus R to the T. And so 0 0.9858 is equal to one plus R, so I'll subtract one. So when I do this subtraction here, I get negative 0 0.0142 is equal to R. Because it's negative, that means it's decay. And because it's decay, um, well not because it's decay, it is decay, so what does that mean as a percent? If I move my decimal place two places to the right, I've got negative 1.42 percent uh, decay. So my decay rate is 1.42 percent. Like for you to try these two on your own, um, and I'm going to come back with the answer right after this pause. So pause it here, try them, and see what you get. All right, we're back. So like we did up above, this was p sub zero, and so this is my one plus r, and so if I do 1.09 uh, minus one, that would give me 0 0.09, which would mean nine percent, and because it's positive, that's growth. Okay. On this one, again, p sub zero is here. This one is one plus r. And so if I subtract 0.968 minus one, I get that that's equal to negative 0.032, which would be 3.2% decay. All right, so those are the two answers to those. That's what you should have gotten. All right, down here, another type of problem. Determine the exponential function with initial value of 12, increasing at a rate of 8% per year. And so I need my general formula. My general formula is P sub, or P of T is equal to P sub zero times one plus R to the T, rate expressed as a decimal. So if this is my initial value, that would mean that uh, P sub zero equals 12. And my rate is equal to 0.08%. That would be moving it two places to the left. And so my equation would be P sub T is equal to 12 times 1.08, because I've got to add one to my rate as a decimal, and then to the T power. Okay. Or I could write it like this, F of X, to put in my calculator, is equal to 12 times 1.08 to the x. All right, go ahead and pause, try this next one. It looks really familiar, but you can check to see if you got your answer right to see if you know how to do it. Um, and we'll come back right after this pause. All right, we're back. So initial value is our p sub zero. 17% is r equals 0.17. So our equation would be p sub t is equal to five times. 1.17 to the t, or in terms of an f of x, f of x equals 5 times point, sorry, 1.17 to the x power. All right, guys, that's the basics of this. Like I said, we're going to come back and look at the applications of it on Monday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.